We look at Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1. And the heavens were open. Now it came to pass. I thought we were reading scripture together. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Keba, the, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. Somebody say amen. amen. I restrict myself to a few minutes so that we can just do some spiritual warfare together. Shall we do that? Yes. Shall we do that? Yes. Those words say the heavens, not the heaven. It's plural. Are we together? It's not one heaven. It is heavens. So get that. This simple English. It is heavens, not heaven. Because it's not one heaven, Pastor Thaddeus, not even two heavens, it's three heavens. And today, by the grace of God, your first heaven must be open. Your second heaven must be open. And the third heaven must be open over you. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 14, Chapter 12, verse, from, verse, from verse 1. First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Are you there? From verse 2 to 4. Ah, there are people in the first service, so they know. Let's, let's do an agreement. If you want me to finish quickly, read the scriptures. Then I'll finish quickly. You read the scriptures and I'll preach, all right? What does it say? I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know. Whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Such one was caught up to the third. Continue. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God, verse 4, he was caught up into the paradise and had inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. So we have got, if there's a third heaven, there must be a first one. Now, this side, I'm getting to enjoy this side now. If there's a third heaven, then means there's a first one. And means there's a second one for there to be a third one. And Paul says, me, I know a man. Whether in the body or not, I do not know, but God knows. This man was caught up to the third heaven. Then he tells us another name of that third heaven. He says that third heaven is called what? Paradise. And when this man got there, the things he had and saw, it is illegal to speak about them when you came down here. When we are talking about open heavens, we mean that all the three must be open. Are we still together? Yes. But I'm never tell them all the, all the three must be open. Must be open. The can we go very quickly? Can we go very quickly? Let's look at the first heaven. Shall we look at the first heaven? The first heaven is very simple. You'll find that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 6, and, verse 6 to 8. The first heaven comprised of the, what you can see with your eyes. What you can see. God said, let there be a firmament. It's also called the, the first heaven. The third heaven is also called paradise. The first heaven is also called the firmament. I know Mike Musaim is here, so let's teach, let's teach this together, Mike. Are we together? There shall be a what? A firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Don't be confused. The clouds are water. The river is water. So it's the waters from the waters. I thought this is Papa Center. When the Bible says waters from the waters, it simply means water has three states. Solid, liquid, and gas. This is liquid. This is the one you know. When it becomes into vapor, it is gas. That's the clouds. So it is still water. When it is, am I talking to somebody here? When it is ice, it's also still. So God was dividing the waters from the water. We shall have a good time in this place. Is, is it making sense now? Now, put it up the scripture again. You know me, I'm a Bible teacher, so we need to enjoy ourselves. Shall we do that? 
and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was, and continue, and called the firmament what? That's the first heaven. He called the firmament what? That is the first heaven. So in the evening and the morning, there was, that was the second day. What is in this firmament? Let's look at Let's go very forward quickly. I'll do this in the next two minutes and we are done with the first heaven because they want us to do some warfare here. Are we ready to do that? Are you still with me? Yes. Go to verse 14, verse 14 to 19. 14 to 19, 14 to 19, 14 to 19. Then God said, let there be what? Do you remember what the first heaven is called what? The firmament. So what is he saying? Let there be what? Light in the firmament of the heavens to divide what? From the night and? Let them be for signs and season and for days and years. Verse, 16, verse 15. Let them be for light in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Verse 16. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule by night. And he made the stars. So the first heaven is the one we can see. The moon, the sun, the stars, the clouds. What is the purpose of the first heaven, Pastor Don? We have been told there, number one is to give us light. Number two is to control seasons. Hello? And I want to declare, you know me as I preach, I declare. I, I'm not calling you for to lay hands on you. If you think you shall fall in this service, you go and, go and fall outside. Just get the word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Can I continue? Yes. I declare over your life. Yes. As the first heavens open over you, yes. your season shall change for the better. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. Right now we have got a dry season. Yes. But I prophesied in Ukambani yesterday. Yes. I was preaching in my kitu yesterday. Yes. I said it doesn't matter what it looks like. When God begins to change your seasons, it may appear like there is a drought. But this year, you may harvest more than Isaac harvested in a dry season. Somebody say amen. amen. When your first heavens are open, your season begin to change. Amen. And I declare to somebody here, the season you have been in, the season of drought, the season of infertility, the season of lack of productivity is about to come to an end because when the first heavens open, your seasons must change. Just sit down. The first heavens give light. The first heavens, they give us seasons. The third, the third thing these heavens do, it's found in Psalms chapter 8 and verse 3. Solomon will be like this one. Psalms chapter 8, verse, verse 3. What does it say? Read it for me. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Imagine him one other. That when you look at the first heavens, and you see the stars, you see the moon, you see the thunder, you hear the lightning. Somebody say amen. amen. And it comes into your mind that there is a God in heaven who put the sun where it is. And it has never lost direction. The sun does not overlap the moon. Somebody say amen. It remains on its path. The moon is goes rotating around the earth. The earth around the sun. Somebody say amen. When you see the stars where they are, that God has put them there, there's an intelligent person who put all these things up there. They talk about the big bang theory. And I tell them, even a small bang kills us. How can a big bang give life? I'm trying to think, Pastor Julian. If a small bang will kill you, how can a big, how can life come out of a big bang? If a small bang kills. That's why I believe in the story of creation. This idea is struggling. Can I preach here? That's why I believe there's, a, there's an intelligent God somewhere who put everything together, who put the sun and the moon together, who put the stars where they are, who put the sun where it is. Somebody say amen. 
So that when I look at the stars, when I look at the moon, when I look at the sun, I start to praise and worship the maker of those things. It should provoke you to worship God and to bless his name and to lift up his name. Somebody say yes. yes. No wonder there's a song that says, then sings my soul, my savior, God. Why does he say that? Because I've heard the thunder. I've seen lightning. I've seen the sun. I've seen the moon. And they provoke me to worship the God who is the maker of these things. Somebody say amen. amen. Not only does it provoke me to worship, but I ask myself a question. That this God who made all this, who owns all this, that imagine him according, that that same God has got enough time to look for you and visit you where you are somebody say amen. amen he told Moses tell my people I have heard their cry I hear their pain I see their suffering and I'm able to come down and come to their house and visit with them so I'm talking to somebody here the MCA may not know your house the governor may not know where you live your MP may not even know your name but I can assure you, President Uhuru Kenyatta may never know who you are. But there is a God in heaven, the maker of the universe. He knows your name. He knows where you live. He hears your cry. He's interested in you. He knows who you are. Somebody give him a clap offering and bless. Give him a shout and a clap offering right now. Somebody say amen. amen. When I see the first heavens, they are talking to me. To praise this God, to worship this God, and to know, say, you know something? This God knows my house. He knows my situation. I may be a single mother crying alone. He says, I've heard your cry. He says, I know you are suffering. He says, I know you are pain. That's how much important you are to this God who is the maker of heaven and earth. Somebody say yes. I was telling a pastor the other day, he passed near parliament, and I found our MPs are making a tunnel to walk from parliament buildings to go to Continental House because they don't want to meet their voters after they have been elected. They are avoiding us. But God, he says, I walk among them. I'm called Emmanuel. I live among my people. I dwell among my people. Somebody say amen. amen. Preach to you and never tell him, neighbor. May the God look for a neighbor who looks like they, they celebrate your progress and talk to the teller. May the God who made the stars and the moon and the clouds and the earth, may that God always be near you. Somebody say, Amen. amen. The first heavens are meant to provoke us to worship God. I don't have the time, but that's how this young man shall write more songs. And I call more songs out of you. As you look at the stars, as you look at the moon, as you look at what God has done, let it provoke you to sing a new song. Because the heavens worship him, the stars worship him, the moon worship him. Somebody say yes! I will jump from the first heaven to the third heaven because that's what matters. See, I told you, you may think I'm preaching it, I'm done. We are already in the third heaven. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> the third heaven is where God dwells. Amen. Can I continue? Yes. And in the book of Luke chapter 20, let me see, let me get my reference correct so I don't give you a, a wrong reference here. Then he said, another of a kill, bro. What is the problem? Christo. In, in, in the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 43. 23, 43. Luke 23, 43. What, read, what, read for me, what does it say? What did he say? Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Who is this? That is the second thief. Remember there were two thieves. Crucified with Jesus. Do you remember? Inge. Inge ile. Ile. 
One of them rebuked Jesus and said, you, you saved the people. Why don't you save yourself and save us? Before Jesus could answer him, the other thief told him, where? Don't get shown away. You are a thief. And I am a thief. And we know thieves. This one is not one of us. Because <laughs> they know one another. He told him, this one is not one. See, Mungiki, this one is not one of us. Then he made a simple prayer. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. If there's a prayer, a prayer Jesus answers quickly. It's a prayer of a sinner who's repenting. That one, listen, there are no seven steps to salvation. There are three steps to salvation. There's only one step. Repent and believe and you are born again. As soon as he made that prayer request, Jesus answered him. What did he tell him? Tonight. When? You shall be with me where? What is paradise? If you're writing notes, you write. Paradise is the abode of disembodied spirits. They were confused. Disembodied spirits, spirits that don't have a body anymore. When the spirit leaves the body, it's called a disembodied spirit. Is that a good theological language? The abode of disembodied spirits of righteous people is called paradise. Now, why does Jesus tell this man, tonight will be with me in paradise? It is because before Jesus came, the righteous dead did not go to paradise. They went to a place that is close, in close proximity with the unrighteous dead. And you can see that in the story of Lazarus and the rich man. The Bible says, and Lazarus died. And he went to the bosom of Abraham. Then the Bible says, and the rich man died also. But wherever he went, he could see Abraham, he could see Lazarus. Do you understand me now? Now, you need to understand theology now. They were in close proximity, and the rich man started to talk to Abraham. Father Abraham. He is the mother. He knew Lazarus. But because Lazarus was poor, he did not want to call his name. He called Abraham because Abraham was as rich as him. Lift up your finger and say, my father. Are you ready for revelation? Are you ready for revelation? Lift up one finger and say, my father. My father, my father, my father. I refuse to die in poverty. Even in death, even in death, even in death, that's why you must not die in poverty. You need, to take, you need to get my message in the first service. You shall build houses. You shall start businesses. You shall, your children shall get married. You shall get married. You shall not be diminished. You shall increase. Somebody say yes. They were in close proximity to one another. But when Jesus came and he died, and the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, he who ascended is the same one who did what? Who descended. And when he descended, he was going to take some captives of death. He brought out captivity captives. That's Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9. Those who are those captivity, those who are people like Abraham, and the Lazarus, David, and others, 
Now that this he ascended, what does it mean by that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? Are you seeing that? Go to verse 10. Go to verse, show them verse 10. He who descended is also the one who has done what? Ascended above all the heavens. Now we are coming to that as we finish. So when he ascended, what did he ascend? And he, I'm in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. It's because by this time before Jesus died, in as much then, I thought we were reading scriptures, in as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. Who is that? The devil! Up to that time, the devil had the power of death. But when Jesus rose up from the grave, he carried a king Abraham with him. Are you understanding, friends? Because in Matthew 27, verse 51, it tells us that when Jesus said, it is finished, the temple, in the cutting the temple was torn from top to bottom. And the graves of righteous men were burst open and they were seen walking. Are you seeing that? Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And then verse 52. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And then verse quickly. And, somebody, and coming out of their graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. What happened? Jesus had broken the power of death of a righteous men and women from that moment. Are, we still, are, you, are, you, are you learning something here? Can I continue? Can I continue? When he appears to John in the book of Revelation, John chapter 1, Revelation chapter 1, in verse 17, he tells John, I am the Alpha and I'm the Omega. I am the beginning and I'm the end. And I'm the one who was dead. But behold, I live forevermore. What more does he say? And I have the keys of death and of hell. The devil doesn't have them anymore. Somebody say amen. amen. That is why today we can say, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. For to be absent from this body is to be present with Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Now when I die, I don't go to the bosom of Abraham. I go to the presence of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Push your neighbor, tell him neighbor, I told you, my life will never, ever be the same. Why? Because there's a third heaven. Amen. There's an abode for saints who now sleep in the Lord. When I sleep in the Lord, you can take my body. Yes. Lay it in a grave. But I can assure you, I'm not there. Jesus says, tonight, you shall be with me in paradise. Somebody say, amen. The devil is a liar. Where are you? I said the devil is a liar. Because now that the heavens are open, we don't fear the grave. We don't fear death. We know we are overcomers. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus transfers this man. Tells you with you, you are not going where Abraham is. I am going with you to where? Paradise. I'm taking you to the third heaven direct. It's called Polo Piach. Going to heaven non-stop. Others went to heaven through going to the other place. But not this, 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 this thief. When he got saved, he went to heaven how? direct. I declare to somebody here. When you leave this world, you are not going anywhere else. Not to the bosom of Abraham. You are going to paradise. To the presence of God. Somebody say yes! yes. I'm in Revelation. I'm in Revel I don't know where you are. Are you still with me? Or have I lost you somewhere? Because we are about done. We are about done. We are about done. We are about to go home. Are you still with me? Or did I lose you somewhere? Did I lose you? Revelation 2.7. Revelation 2.7. There's something it says. Revelation 2.7. Get it quick. Revelation 2.7. What does it say? Then he was an ear. Let him do what? Let him hear. What shall he hear? What the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I'll give to it from the tree of life, which is where? In the midst of paradise of God. This third heaven, that's where God dwells. 
That's why Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who is he where? That is the dwelling place of God. Jesus says, heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Our God dwells in heaven. If they keep on asking you, where is your God? Tell them, our God dwells in heaven. That's why we pray, our Father, who is where? In heaven. So it's not only the abode of disembodied spirits of righteous men, it is also the dwelling place of the living God. How do you get the church? That is still also the abode of the angels. Wherever so angels, he says, Isaiah tells us, when he saw the throne of God, he saw angels around the throne. When I, uh, Jacob, when the heavens were open, he saw angels descending and ascending from heaven. It's also the abode of the angels. Can I continue? Because some of you think, I'm on this point, I'm not laboring on anymore. I'm going on. Are you understanding the church? It's not only the abode of the angels. This is the place where we direct our prayers. Our prayers are directed to the third heavens. Your blessings come from the third heavens. Can I continue? Our worship is directed to the third heavens. Because that's where God dwells. So I am praying today. See, I told you I'm finishing. I said I'm praying today. That as your first heaven opens, may the third heaven open over you. I say may the third heaven open, you, over, open over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand finger and say, my father. my father. Are you still with me? Yes. Or did I leave you somewhere? No. Say, my father. My father. My father, my father, my father. My father. May every angel yes. sent on assignment yes. to my life yes. this year yes. locate my house, yes. locate my life, yes. locate my dwelling place, yes. locate me this year. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Are you still praying? Yes. Can you pray one more? Yes. Say, my father, yes. my father, my father, my father, yes. every blessing yes. in heaven yes. with my name on it, this year, no diversion, no delay. It shall not go to another house. There shall be no procrastination. It shall locate me this year in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Heaven is a source of your blessing. Heaven is a source of your favor. Heaven is a source of everything good. A good wife comes from the heaven. Your promotion is from above. Every good thing comes from the heaven, from the Father of light in whom there's no shadow of turning. That is a source of your blessings. And today I pray, your first heavens shall be open. The third heaven shall be open over you. Somebody say amen. amen. Are we still together? Yes. We come to the third heaven and we are done. Let's go to the third heaven. We, shall we go to the third heaven? The second heaven. It's a very strange heaven, but we shall deal with it. Horizontally and perpendicularly. And sort it out in Jesus' name. And we learn about it in the book of Daniel. When Daniel is praying in chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel is praying. And he's in prayer for 21 days. Before his answer comes. And the angel who comes. He tells him Daniel in Mwanaza. Sorry chapter 10 verse 13. Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. Now pick it from around verse 9 so people can understand. Which made me and on my continue 
man greatly beloved, understand the words I speak to you. And I stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking, I stood trembling. What did he say? Yes. Yes. Get, get this theological understanding. From the first day, you gave yourself in prayer and fasting. You are hard. God did not hear you today. He heard you 21 days ago. I've come to assure somebody here. From the first day, you started praying for your father, for your mother, for yourself, for your situation. The God of heaven, in the third of heaven, heard you. From the first, he did what? And from the first day, he sent an answer. The angel said, I was released the first day. But the reason I did not come is because as I was coming, I found a roadblock. The prince of the air over this country that was called Persia withstood me. And I've been fighting with them for 21 days. And the heavens were consulting one another. Is that Daniel still praying? Yes. Did we hear his prayers? Yes, we did. Did we send an answer? Yes, we did. Then how come he's still praying? Then they said, Archangel Michael, go and find out what has happened to the answer we sent. Right now, we are beginning to do warfare. I say we are beginning to do warfare. The devil is a liar. He shall not hinder your prayers anymore. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you ready to do some warfare? Say with me, every power, every demonic power on assignment to hinder my prayers, to, hear my, to hinder my answers, right now, in the name of Jesus, what are you waiting for? Scatter! 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 In Jesus' name. Now sit down. That is an artificial roadblock. It's not gazetted. It is an illegal roadblock. It is not gazetted. And I'll show you in scripture. The Bible says in Psalms 115 verse 16 the heaven even the heavens are the Lord's. Continue. But the earth he has given to the children of men. There is nothing that was given to Satan. Can I say that again? The heaven, even the heavens. What does he say? The heaven, even the heavens, belong to who? But what about the earth? He has given the earth to the children of men. This is our place. That is his place. The roadblock Hapa Katikati is not gazetted. It is illegal. It's unconstitutional. Genesis 1.26 He says, when let us make man in our own image. Let him have what? Dominion over the earth. Genesis 1.28 says, and God blessed them. And said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, have dominion, subdue it. The earth he has given to us. 
Are you understanding me, church? But in between the third heaven and us, someone came there who was not meant to be there. Lucifer was meant to be in heaven. Together with Archangel Michael and Gabriel. But when he rebelled, because rebellion was found in his heart, he was thrown out and he became a squatter in the atmosphere. I'm about to preach this thing. In Luke chapter 10, verse 17, Jesus has sent out his disciples. And as they went out, they discovered, my God, even the demons are subject to us in his name. Read for me, what does it say? Then the 70 returned with joy. I'm about to prophesy. As you leave this service, you are not going home the same way you came. You are going out to home with joy. Who, who I was said to prophesy. As you leave this service, you shall not go back the same way you came. May you return to your house with joy. May you return to your business with joy. May you go back to your place with joy. Somebody say amen. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Why did they go home with joy? Because they said, that Father, even the demons are subject to us in your From today, every demon that has bothered you, that has challenged you, that has hindered you, I declare in the name of Jesus, he's subject to you. Somebody say amen. amen. Shake your neighbor, tell them, neighbor. Now I know my life will never, ever be the same again because even the demons are subject to me in the name of Jesus. Kenya is the only country where people become apostles because they cast out devils. Casting out devils is not the work of apostles. Is a work of every rank and file believer here. I send you forth today in the name of Jesus. Go and, dress, go and address every demon, every witch in your area and tell them to shut up and they shall be subject to you. Somebody say yes. yes. Don't call Pastor Zeno. Don't, don't trouble Pastor Thaddeus. Where you come, I'm like I could and be a young daimon or your pepo, Katika Gina la Yesu, Nakunya Mazisha, Puanini, Nico and Amlaka from the third heaven. Are we together? When they finished giving their testimony, Jesus told them, Let me give you my testimony. Let me give you my. His testimony is in verse 18. Look at his testimony. He says, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like what? Lightning. That's where he belonged. As an, an, an archangel. But when rebellion was found in him, when he started saying, I shall raise myself. I shall lift myself. I shall build my... Before he finished the thought, before he could actualize anything, before he could say anything, like what? I declare over your life. If Satan fell from heaven like, he shall fall out of your life like, your healing shall come like, your promotion shall come like, your victory shall come like. Your triumph shall come like. You shall overcome like. Let that be a portion in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Receive that in Jesus' name. Receive that in Jesus' name. When he was kicked out, he had no place to go. He dwelt in the air. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. He says it dwells in the atmosphere. 
in which he once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power. Where? In the air. The heavens belong to God. The earth has given to the sons of the devil is a squatter in the air. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. I'm about to finish. I'm about to finish. If you don't get this revelation, you are never meant to get any revelation from scripture. Then maybe you are made of asbestos. And you need to come to me for special prayer. What, what does Paul say? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Tell your neighbor, to look at someone and tell him, you are not my problem. Neither am I your problem. <laughs> Whom are we fighting with, Pastor Solo? What does he say? Eh? But against what? Pri no, not those names, but what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against what? Against spiritual hosts of wickedness. Where are they dwelling? They are only pretending to be in heavenly places. They are not in heaven. They are not on earth. They are, <laughs> they are squatting in the heavenly places. Now, get revelation now. Get revelation now. I'm in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. Jesus has died. Jesus is resurrecting. What does he say? Paul is saying, I pray that your eyes may be opened, that you may see. What may you see? What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Verse 20. Give me verse 20. Which he worked in? Christ. Continue. When he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. Where? The devil is operating from the heavenly places. And God has put Jesus to sit where? In the heavenly places. But how does he make him sit? God verse 21. God verse 21. Very quickly, we are done. Where does he sit? Far above all principality and power and dominion, might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in that which is not these words. The devil is operating from the heavenly places, but Jesus was brought and is not operating. He is seated because Jesus is reigning, is ruling. Are we together, church? The Bible says the devil is moving around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But as he's moving around, Jesus is not following him. Jesus is seated. Because Jesus overcame him once and for all, disarmed him once and for all, settled the score once and for all. Somebody say amen. And he's seated because Jesus is reigning. He's ruling. Yet the devil is walking around like a roaring, but he's not a lion. I said he's not a lion. He's like a lion, but he's not a lion. We know the lion. Is the land of the tribe of Judah. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. Do you know what the Bible says? It says the devil is walking around. But can I tell you something more? But the eyes of the Lord are running. <laughs> when he's walking, the eyes of the Lord are doing what? Running to and fro. Seeking to show himself strong on behalf of those who fear him. The devil may be walking. The eyes of the Lord are running. Before the devil reaches you, the eyes of the Lord have reached you and created a barrier. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. No wonder he, the devil told God, how can I touch Job? You have created a wall of protection. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord are running faster than the devil is moving. The devil is a liar. He should have killed you before you came to this service. But now that you are here, he cannot be able to kill you. Because you now know he's walking. The eyes of the Lord are running. Do you know what he says more? He says, and your life. And my life is hidden together with the Christ in God. That's why he's looking for us, but he cannot find us. 
about to finish this thing. Christ is seated far above all principalities and all powers and might and every name. Your problem has a name. But Jesus is above that name. That's why cancer, arthritis, blood pressure. I'm prophesying to somebody here. I'm saying diabetes must bow to the name of Jesus because they're under his name. Somebody say yes. yes. Not only that, it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, with which he loved us. Continue verse, verse 5. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Look at verse 6. And raised us up. Ah. What did he do? So when he was raising Jesus, what did he do? He raised us up together with so as Christ was rising, I was also rising with him. Somebody say amen. amen. And as Christ is seated far above every authority, he does not provide another chair. No, he tells you, you also come and sit with me. Are you seeing that? Put up the scripture. And he made us to sit together with Christ. In the, are you seeing that? He made us to sit together with Christ. Are you seeing those words? In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If this does not bless you, nothing shall bless you. He's simply saying, he did not give you another throne. He From today, whatever Jesus defeated, you have defeated. Whatever Jesus overcame, you have overcome. Whatever is under the feet of Jesus is under your feet. Whatever cannot touch Jesus cannot touch you. Whatever will run away from Jesus shall run away from you. Whatever cannot touch Jesus cannot touch you. Somebody say yes. Papio never tell a neighbor. I told you my life will never ever be the same again because today I am seated together with Christ above the heavenly places. Somebody say yes. yes. Amen. The devil is operating from the heavenly places. But me and you are sitting above the heavenly places. Far above. Yes. Daniel operated below the heavenly places. Because Jesus had not come. Jesus had not died. Now that Jesus has come and Jesus has died, How much more? you are not operating from under the heavenly places. Yes, you are operating above the heavenly places. Yes. There is nothing now to hinder your prayers. Yes. To hinder your worship. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell everybody, now I know. Now I know. My, life My life will never, yes. ever yes. be the same again. Yes. Because I am not under there. I am above here. That is why after Jesus gave his testimony. In Luke chapter 10 verse 18. If I gave his testimony. He says in verse 19, verse 19, he says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. If I were you, I'd have stood on my feet right now and taken a step forward and looked at every animal, looked at every animal, which chairs have been using against your ministry, against your business, against your family, and declare from today 
I'm operating from my position above the heavenly places. I'm walking over you. I trample over you. Somebody say yes. Muzungus do not understand that scripture. We understand that scripture. Because every witch in Africa uses animals. Tortoises, chameleons, lizards, hyenas, leopards, crabs, snakes. Can I continue? Yes. Right now. Yes. If I were you, I'd have my finger up there. Say, my father. My father. One more time, my father. My father, my father, my father. Every animal being used in witchcraft against me, my family, my business, this church, right now, in the name of Jesus, what are you waiting for? Die, 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 die. In Jesus' name, somebody say yes. Some of you, when you go home, you shall hear of some dead chameleons, some dead hyenas, some dead snakes, some dead tortoises. They are dying from this service because you are not operating from there. You are operating from there. You are not under the heavenly places. You are above the heavenly places. That artificial barrier for you is no longer there. Jesus has removed it. Yeah. Somebody say yes. I like wearing good quality shoes. One brand I love is called this, this one, Jeffrey West. I buy them in the UK, in just one particular shop. The reason I bought, especially this pair, I bought it with my friend Peter Kamau and his wife Pauline. In fact, they're the ones I sent to buy it and bring it to me. Then Pastor Pauline rang me and said, Daddy, did you see your shoes? I said, why? Because underneath your shoes, there's a picture of the devil drawn there. She actually, come and see. Yeah, yeah. When you see this is with his tail, mm -hmm. it's... It's under these shoes. There's a drawing of the devil. You see that? With his tail. It's yeah. under these shoes. Yeah. yeah. This, this drawing you see there. Yes. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. It's there. It's there. I told them, that's why I'm buying that shoe. Yeah. I'll not buy a hat. I'll not buy a t-shirt. I'll not buy a shirt. But shoes under my feet. That's why I buy. Because that's where the devil belongs. He belongs under my feet. From today, shake and tell your neighbor from today, I know where the devil belongs. Not on my head, not on my chest, not on my back, under my feet, under my feet. Someone should be doing that under my feet. Under my feet, under my feet, under my feet. Someone say yes, because I declare over you, your first heavens are open, your second heaven is open, your third heaven is open. In the name of Jesus, from today, may you live. I say, may you live, may you walk, may you walk. And I open heavens. Tell them for me, neighbor. From today, I am living. I am walking. I am walking. And I open heavens. The first one, the second one, and the third one. All of them are open. Raise your hands. May you walk in the light of the revelation you have received. But there's no devil. There's no demon. 
There's no witch. There's no wizard. There's no name above the name of Jesus. And that from today, whatever cannot touch Jesus shall not touch you. Whatever fears Jesus shall fear you. Whatever Jesus defeated, you have defeated. Whatever Jesus overcame, you have overcome. Whatever Jesus walks upon, you shall walk upon. Whatever is under the feet of Jesus shall be under your feet. In Jesus' mighty name. And together we say, and again we say, One of the signs that God is not using a man is when they lift themselves higher than Christ. There has to be a ministry of the Lord Jesus brought back into the center of the church. But what God has been getting you ready to understand is that you must make sure you're not in love with money. You must make sure you're not in love with lust. You must make sure that you're not prideful. You must make sure that your, your life is hid in Christ. The image you bear is an image that can no longer be a procrastinator. The image you bear is an image that can no longer be a doubter. I'm trusting God. Let me tell you, the only way for Kenya to go is an invasion by God or a revolution. And I'm trusting God that what has happened in this nation is the ground has been set for revival. There's going to be a revival by people that carry the image of God. Whose image do you see on Solomon? Whose image do you see on Rachel? The image...